Well, I, want, I wanted to, uh, to uh, you know, get back to what you were talking about with, with you know, your your behavioral change from a public health perspective, because right. I think what you're, you're talking about is very, very important uh, as far as changing behavior for the uh, habitual driver. And, you know, how do you change behavior for a person that feels entitled in a different way uh, when you're doing health assessments and health health behavior change? I mean, what, what would you suggest for entitled drivers other than, you know, don't listen to them as, as, as the you know, know-it-alls on the road and don't cater to their needs and, and also try to control them in a very significant way? Yeah, I think, you know, the most significant way that where we can break through when we take a look at, at behavior change is we can't be preaching to them. As soon as you start down the road of, you know, uh, of preaching and saying, this is the way that you should do and this is what you should do. And it, it, in, in public health, in, <laughs> in changing, you know, behaviors out on the streets, we have seen the imploring people to slow down and imploring people to drive carefully and imploring people to walk more and bike more and drive less. That just doesn't do it. What does do it is, you know, creating a an environment, a situation that embraces and incentivizes and and really brings this to life. What are we looking at? <laughs> well, we're looking at a place that probably is full of of uh, entitled drivers, but they're they're streets that don't allow entitled driving on them, right? Uh-huh. I mean. Going to be people everywhere that you know feel the sense of you know I'm allowed to drive, and these are people when when they get outside of the boundaries of of this you know delightful pedestrian space, they're probably going to get into a car and speed. That's fine. This is a pedestrian environment. This is a place you know a city that that allows the movement of children, allows the movement of of, of people in wheelchairs and other able people and elderly people, and you know it's a delightful place to sit. Yeah, um, and you got to you got to be there for a little while. What were you doing there? Oh, and where this is, is this? This is such a wonderful place. This is the city of Pontevedra. It's in Spain, and I was doing a tour three, four years ago of uh, pedestrian spaces in Europe, just because it just you know was a busman's holiday kind of thing. You know, I do these kinds of things and. I expected to spend, I'd, I'd read about Ponte Vedra. I expected to spend like two or three days there. And I ended up spending three weeks there. <laughs> <laughs> you travel like I travel. <laughs> so wonderful. So this is a city, a very, you know, it's a city of 150,000. Downtown is about 50,000. And you can see there's a person in a wheelchair in the background. there. Yeah. Um, and here I am like being accompanied by the, the assistant mayor and the director of, of, uh, transportation services and somehow I got to be a celebrity in Ponte Vedra because I was like writing about it then and but I got to meet the mayor who was first elected about 25 years ago and he um, is a pediatrician and he uh, said you know the children that are coming into my office are either obese or they have you know been hit by a car and, you know, they, you know, cars are the, the root of all, you know, bad design. And he had read the Spanish translation of Jane Jacobs. And he said, we, I'm going to run on, as a pediatrician, I'm going to run on a platform of a car-free downtown Ponte Vedra. And he got elected. He was a very charming guy. And he had to convince his city staff to go along with this. And then he started pedestrianizing the downtown of Ponte Vedra turning what had been plazas and then turned into parking lots back into plazas for people. Right. And uh, people just said, what are you doing? You're taking away all the cars. And he said, you know, this is what you voted for. This is how you voted for me as the, as the leader of Ponte Vendra. Uh, I, was, and I was serious. I was serious. First, <laughs> hundred, first hundred days, he kicked all the cars out of the downtown. He figured out how to do yeah. it. And he, I mean, a, a big lift was also getting the, the city staff to go along with it yeah. and, you know, working out the details is not trivial, but he figured it out, got the staff on board. And after the first hundred days, you know, as he, you know, was, was going along, people were going, why isn't my part of town 
car free? You know, why isn't yeah. my party down car free? And eventually he got the whole of the downtown because everybody wanted this delightful space where people can walk and feel comfortable and the children can play in all the plazas. There's no danger of people driving and hurting pedestrians. It's mostly a pedestrian city, relatively right. little bike, you know, a little yeah. bit of bike delivery, but it's mostly a walking city. And he's been reelected uh, five times now. Yeah. So he's been, he's been mayor for 25 years. Yeah. And, fantastic. And I, you know, highly, it's, it's actually a little difficult to get to. It's just a little North of Portugal and everybody I recommend, you know, to go to it. it it's a schlep to get to. But yeah. well, and the other thing that, that because it's been a pedestrian city for 25 years and a deliberate change, the, yeah. um, that's the, by, the, by the way, it's the red pin up on the <laughs> upper no. upper left. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see you know, Madrid's in the middle there. Uh, I've been down here yeah. to Seville, Sevilla. Yeah, but not. And uh, but I have not made it over to. So it's on my list. Yes. Not and, for uh, this year, but next year. The other thing that, that I want to kind of highlight is the in the city that they paid a lot of attention after 25 years. Uh, some industries got started alongside of it that are, are um, pedestrian oriented. So there's incredibly good paving, you know, modern paving that's been added to it. There's really great street furniture and great street lighting. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't sort of see it at first because, you know. Yeah, you but when, you've, when you really pay attention and you start to focus in on the quality of what is down here, you start to see that level of craftsmanship. And, and this is something the Dutch do also very, very well. And, and, and the Danes as well is really using the, the pavers and the, and the, the, the stepping stones and using different materials to demarcate, you know, the different sections of, of the, of, of that environment there. So yeah, fantastic. It's Subtle, but you know, as as you know, a human habitat, you you don't yeah. maybe pay attention to it, but but your body pays attention to it. Your brain is just says, oh, something's different in this yeah. place versus that place, and you're so, so that that's your answer. Mm -hmm. That was my answer to you. Is just that is it? You, you create that situation, and this is actually kind of how we're able to. Um, to make some inroads in people who are, are skeptical and, and, and just like, Oh, well, how do we change our behavior? If you create quality, you know, inviting environments where people are embraced and, and, and they're just like, Oh, that was amazing. Um, and it's, it's the quintessential joke, right? Is that, you know, people go away on vacation and they go to someplace wonderful and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I just got back from, you know, from, you know, Ponte Vedra. It was, it was amazing. I just got back from Copenhagen. Oh my gosh, the plazas and, and, and for, or Italy and da, da, da. And it's like, oh, well, if somebody were to say, well, why don't we do that here? Oh, no, 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 no. We could never do that here. But the point is, is that you can and that's one of the things that I've learned over the years is that there is those that layering of creating an environment that is truly um, authentically inviting so that it really does feel like, oh, we're, we're talking about an all ages and abilities environment. We're, we're not going to be worried about our little one running over to here or exploring the environment. It's like or in the case of the Dutch children mentioned earlier, you know, they routinely get themselves to school, to their friend's house, exploring the city. And it, it's, it, there's that expectation that, you know, they've developed those skills, those social ability, the, the navigation skills to be able to do all these things and they're better for it. And so, it's the, at the other end of life too. I mean, you know, yes, I the to other end of life. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. This year, and one of the things I'm looking for is a place I can, you know, age in place that I can yep. walk, I can bike without fear. I mean, right now I'm extremely mobile, but I know 20 years yeah. from now, 20 years older, and I, I need a place that that you know is embracing to somebody that that is aging. And I don't think American cities are considering that. That are, they're yeah. not really considering aging in place. Yeah, and so 
th- there's the old adage that we've talked about, uh, you know, o- over over the decades of build it and they will come. And there's there's something to that. Yes, you, you have to build this before people can get to it, <laughs> before people can use it. But it's it's not as simple as just, you know, build that trail or build that protected bike way and they will come. Yes, you have to build truly authentic places, but then you also have to have, and that's what I call, you know, the, the activity assets, the hardware activity assets, the parks, the pools, the places, the, you know, the, the, the trails, the protected bike lanes. These are, are things that are physical in nature in our environment and you can map them out, but you also have to have the software activity assets. You have to have the policies and the procedures and the activation events and the things that really engage people and support people. Oh, the density as well. I mean, you need to, in order to activate something, you need to have enough people around. Exactly. Yeah. Which I would say is, is, is part of, you know, sort of that policy framework of what are your land use, you know, guidelines and, 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 you know, how are you looking at transforming the built environment? Are you looking at a sea of, of asphalt <laughs> parking? Uh, nobody wants to be there. Yeah. And I mean, that, that is, you know, the, the, the best land use plan is a you know, transportation plan. Best transportation plan is a land use plan. I mean, it right. goes both ways. You need, you need both. Uh, but we can only make that change if we elect the people in positions of power who can step up and do that work. Uh, we have to elect mayors like the mayor of, of, Ponte Vedra, uh, and re-elect them. Uh, so this, again, this, this man uh, was elected uh, five times. And, you know, if we have a, a person that has that as a priority to make places for people to, to ensure that our habitat is, is actually habitable, uh, we have to keep on putting them back into power.